Jaydev Gala. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity to speak on the Indian Institute of Technology Bill 2016. Sir, I take this opportunity to congratulate Sri Jabdekar Ji for assuming charge of the HRD ministry. And I'm sure and confident with his vast experience, he would achieve the important objective of providing quality education, particularly technical education at the higher level. I would also like to place on record the thanks of our state to both uh, Javdekar Ji and his predecessor, Sri Smithi Rani Ji, for announcing nine out of the 11 institutions that were mandated in the AP Reorganization Act. Out of 11 institutions that were supposed to be given to Andhra, nine have already been uh, uh, decided, and we're waiting just on a central university and tribal university to complete the other two, sir. So I would like to request at the outset to please consider the central university and uh, tribal university also to complete the obligations set out in this act. Sir, in spite of 58% of the erstwhile Andhra Pradesh <coughs> population being in the present Andhra Pradesh state, we don't have a single institute of central, in central institution, and all the institutions have gone to Telangana because they are located in Hyderabad, sir. So 58% of the population are left denied of high quality education, and we re re uh, beseech the minister. We thank him for everything he's done, and the ministry has done, but we beseech him to please pay special attention to Andhra Pradesh, provide more funds so we can bring up these institutions at a much faster pace, sir. sir I rise to support the bill moved by Sri Javdeka Ji, as it gives IIT Tirupati the legal backing and brings it into the fold of Institutes of Technology Act and also gives it the tag of an institute of national importance. And I welcome this, sir. Tirupati is the board of Lord Venkateshwara and is also an excellent educational center consisting of various universities and institutions. Our honorable chief minister of AP, Sri Nara Chandrababu Naidgaru, aimed to make Tirupati a major knowledge hub of the state. As a part of fulfilling his dream, he has taken steps and brought IIT and other institutions such as IISER and IIIT are also coming up in Tirupati, sir. So the people of AP, particularly Rayal Seema, are thankful to our CM and our Prime Minister and to the HRD Minister for making Tirupati as a knowledge hub, sir. Now, IIT Tirupati is functioning on a temporary campus situated on Tirupati Renugunta Road, sir. The government of AP has provided 50, 500 acres of land for this new campus last year. The objective is to shift to a permanent campus by 2019. But if one looks at the allocations and the pace with which the work is going on, I'm doubtful that it might be completed by 2019, sir. For setting up an I, uh, IIT, a very large amount is required. But last year, government of India has given just 40 crores, and this year, 20 crores has been allocated under the budget, sir. So at this pace, I ask the Honorable Minister, how will we be able to complete the permanent campus by 2019? So I request the Honorable Minister to please release the required funds every year, and only then we'll be able to have a permanent campus by 2019, sir. The House is aware that our Chief Minister, Sri Nara Chandababu Naidigaru, has a vision and resolve to make APS Swarnanda Pradesh. As a part of this, he has chosen location for this IIT at Tirupati, as there are large industrial parks like Sri City near Tada. The government of AP also proposes to develop major industrial activity in the Chennai Nellu Tirupati Triangle to provide opportunities of internships and placements for the students studying at IIT Tirupati. The second point I wish to make is about the faculty, sir. Recently in March this year, IIT Tirupati has issued an advertisement recruiting assistant professor, associate professor, and professor for IIT Tirupati, and the last date for submission was 4th April 2016. But the surprising thing is that you're recruiting them on contract or <coughs> deputation basis, sir. Why are we not recruiting them on regular basis? Why do we not want to recruit them? Why do we want to recruit them on contract or deputation basis, sir? So I humbly request to please appoint professors and other academic people on regular basis only, and that's the only way we'll get quality faculty, sir. Secondly, now that you have no regular director for Tirupati, we have only a mentor director who is not a regular and exclusive director for our IIT. The director, IIT Madras, is also mentoring IIT Palakkad. The Honorable Minister is aware that to manage three premium institutes of national importance is not an easy job, sir. So I also request the Honorable Minister 
to have regular director for Tirupati as early as possible <coughs> and send a supplement advertisement for recruiting the director along with the professor's associate and associate professors as proposed. The next point I wish to make is about the quality of our IITs vis-a-vis -vis other similar institutions in the world. I think many members have already spoken on this subject. I'd just like to add a few points of my own, sir. Sir, recently, as per the QS World University Rankings, not a, even a single IIT has got placed in the top 200 institutions in the world. And IIT Delhi, which was leading from India, has slipped from 212th position to 222nd position in the rankings. I would like to know the reasons behind this, sir. Is it because Indian universities are lacking academic reputation in the world arena? And what are the reasons behind this? How does the HRD ministry view this, and what efforts is the ministry going to take to improve the standing of Indian universities at the international level? We all know how well regarded the graduates of IIT, especially the, the, the top IITs in the country, are viewed all over the world. They're considered among the brightest students and the brightest now. employees to be uh, uh, taken by the top 500 corporations anywhere in the world. I, I've heard a saying, sir, that the most difficult thing about IIT is getting into IIT. And I'm not sure if that's true or not, but if I hear everybody else talking about it, it seems to be the case. The, the selection process by which you select the brightest of the best students in this country is what makes the IITs today, sir. I'm sorry to say, may not be the facilities, may not be the other things, but it's the students. And now we have to bring facilities, faculty, research capabilities, innovation capabilities, leadership capabilities to these students and provide them the, the, uh, the uh, basis to shine in this world, sir. Today, if we are having a brain drain and students are leaving IIT to go to foreign universities to get their master's degrees and their uh, uh, PhDs and also to join corporations around the world, it's because they're not finding such opportunities here today, sir. And I'm sure if we provide these opportunities, we would not have this brain drain and the students would stay back and do the research, sir. Sir, anywhere in the world, research is an ecosystem consisting of universities, defense and space organizations, the CSIR laboratories, and the private sector. In India, I don't see that ecosystem in place today, sir. Each is an island working on their own. How do we bring all of this together to really bring more impetus to our research and development capabilities, as is done elsewhere in the world? Most of the innovation in science and technology starts in, science, starts in defense and space, and then spreads to the other sectors, sir. But here, we don't have access to interact with the defense and space organizations, whether it's a university or a private sector or a CSR laboratory, sir. So pre creating this ecosystem of which universities are the most, one of the most important fundamental uh, uh, parts of that ecosystem is absolutely necessary, sir. Sir, there's another growing, growing concern, and it's regarding dropouts from IIT, sir. If you look at the statistics, more than 2,000 students dropped from IITs in the last three years alone. Between 2012 and 2015, and the dropout is highest last year at 757. What are the reasons behind this, and whether the minister tried to find out the reasons behind, and if so, what remedial steps proposed to take to stop the dropout rate? Jayadevji, please conclude now. Yes, sir, I'm concluding. Sir. Now. sir, coming to the end, I have read in newspapers that IITs are planning to hold their entrance tests abroad from next academic session to admit foreign students. There's a lot of confusion among the students who aim for IIT. They are apprehensive whether the foreign students are admitted in addition to our students, or are they to be a part of the total strength, or is there any cap on foreign students to be admitted into IITs? Although it's a very good thing to bring the diversity, I think these are genuine concerns that the students have, and I'd like you to address that, please, sir. With these observations, I once again request the Honorable Minister to quicken the process of construction of the new building at Priyati Tirupati by allocating sufficient funds and to complete it well before 2019. Thank you very much, sir.